I've been working on inlays with my Shaper Origin, and I've gotten to where I can make perfect inlays using a tapered router bit. I'm going to show you how to design for that in this video. When I say perfect inlays, they're tight fitting, details intricate, but you know, they're not fragile. I've got three videos on the tapered uh, bit inlay technique. This one is going to be the design video where I show you how to design an inlay that can use this technique and get those perfect results. I've got another one where I take one of my designs and just show you how to make it and you can download that design if you look at that video and actually make one of these things without knowing anything about the design process. And then third, I've got a really short video that just shows a couple of fairly simple pieces of infrastructure you need along with your Shaper Origin and Workstation to be able to do this technique. Before I get into all the details on that, the technical details on that, I am going to talk a little bit about the aesthetics. I'm currently focused on making inlaid charcuterie boards. I've, I've surfed around YouTube kind of looking for inspiration. It's like, well, who's making good charcuterie boards? I'll look at some of their techniques and try to get some ideas. I'm sh seeing boards that show, you know, tremendous detail and kind of technical mastery of the CNC project process and all that. Um, but I'm not really seeing boards that are well thought out as charcuterie boards. And you know, what do I mean by that? Well, I think the, the owner of a charcuterie board, how, how are they gonna use it? They're gonna use it when company comes over and they want, you know, basically to have this nice, pretty display of finger food to eat off of, right? Off of the charcuterie board. And so to me, the charcuterie board should complement, you know, a beautiful presentation of food. And I'm just not seeing, I'm not seeing that from what I see. I'm, I'm gonna show an example, I'll talk here and show it on the screen. So it, it's a, a, I think a very skilled woodworker, CNC operator made this and a skilled artist did the design. I totally admire the skills of the designer and the, the artist. Um, but if I look at this, and maybe this isn't even meant to be a charcuterie board, I don't know, but it would not be a good charcuterie board because there's no place for the food. If you put food on it, the inlay design is totally gone. You know, I'm gonna show you one of my designs here. I don't think it's like as artistic. I'm not as good an artist as the person who drew that wolf, but um, I do think it's a better charcuterie board because it's got room for the food. Anyway, so, you know, look, everybody's got their own opinions and the aesthetics is just totally opinions, I think. Uh, the, kind of the field's wide open. If somebody is a decent artist, better than me, I hope, um, and, and just put some thought into, well, what would make a nice charcuterie board? I think, you know, that person can just rock it to the top of the charcuterie board world. Anyways, so my rant's over. Now I'm gonna tell you how to design an inlay to use one of these tapered bit techniques and just get one of these really perfect, beautiful, um, detailed inlays. When I design an inlay, I try to just draw a picture without really thinking much about how I'm gonna turn it into an inlay later. I just try to get to where I like the picture. So this represents an aspen leaf, pretty simple drawing. This is a little shadow where the tip curls under. This is a shadow where the side curls up. Here's a stem and here's a little shadow under the stem. So it's basically got five elements. When I draw something like this, I know I'm gonna to have to tweak it. This is not gonna be doable as, you know, without tweaking as an inlay, a router bit cut inlay, because there's a key rule for any router bit inlay, the router bit has to fit in the inside corners. So here's an example. Let's say I wanted to make a, a, an inlay of a simple triangle. Um, and let's just say this is the female part and this little circle represents my router bit. I can't make this inlay, right? It, it won't work because the router bit can't fit into those sharp corners. I mean, if I took the router bit and said, well, I can cut the male part, just outside corners, just, just no problem. I can make those nice and sharp, but those won't fit into the inside corners that I can cut with the router bit. So what I've got to do is I've got to round all of the edges. Here I'm showing the female with the rounded edges. So those I can cut with the router bit. And because I need the male to fit in there too, I've got to round the edges of the male. So that's the basic requirement on doing any inlay, right? This is not different for a tapered bit. All right, so there's this basic rule then in designing an inlay that you can't have any corners with a radius smaller than the radius of the router bit you're using. 
uh, we're going to be cutting with a tapered bit and its radius changes, right? Because it's tapered, so the deeper it cuts, the wider the radius. And we need to have a way of figuring out what radius to use for the tapered bit when we're uh, designing our inlay. Fortunately, we don't have to do like, you know, trigonometry to do it because somebody else did it for us. There's a Shaper Origin user, his name's Bo. He's very active and very helpful on the Shaper Origin user forum. He created an online calculator we can use to determine the correct radius. I'm going to, so here it is. And it's got my, the bit I use on it. I use this Jerry bit. It's like a $20 bit. Uh, there's some data about the bit, don't worry about that. But here's the user input. You've got to input the inlay thickness. I use one tenth of an inch. You've got to input something called the glue gap and the saw gap or kerf. This is an illustration. It's actually a part of this tapered bit inlay uh, thing. If you, if you click one of the info buttons on it, you'll see this illustration. So this shows the male part, the inlay, and then the recess down here. There's a, this red part is what we're going to call the glue gap. And that's obviously, you know, to give room for glue, to uh, glue the thing in. And then the saw gap is up here. That's called that because a lot of people uh, will saw off this backer board. I don't saw it, I use a sander, so it's kind of a misnomer for me. But in any event, these are really important, the glue gap and the saw gap, because having those gaps lets some leeway, you know, for the inlay to be able to, to completely set into the into the recess without bottoming out on the bottom of the recess and without having the backer board bottom out um, on on top of the workpiece and based on what you input and we'll talk about those inputs in just a second it'll it'll give you these cut settings of depth bit size that's for the recess you know for the uh, female part and the inlay part the male part you get a depth and a bit size and down here you get your design criteria your cut path radius for this combination is 0.0219. So the radius is around half a millimeter. And then you go down here, the cut path clearance, 0.0428. That's a diameter of, you know, what corridor the bit's gonna chop. And that's about a millimeter, 0.428. There's a link in the description to a Shaper Hub project that has some tapered inlay resources. And one of the resources I've got posted there uh, is a PDF that's a worksheet that you can use to jot down the information from the inlay calculator. All right, so this worksheet, you can just jot down the name of your project. These are really the inputs for that um, calculator. That You've got to say what exact bit you're using. There's a drop down where you calculate that. You've got to state your inlay thickness, and we already talked about the glue gap and the saw gap. Those all have to get marked down on here so you can keep them straight. And then the information from the calculator goes here. There was a depth, a bit size, and a something called a flat bit offset. Um, I'm not gonna talk about that right now. For males, and then the corresponding ones for females. Here we are, we've got some sharp detail here on this shadow that obviously will not fit our router bit. Um, at all. It's just not going to go in there. So how do we deal with that? Well, in this case, we're going to deal with it by using layers on our inlay. And that lets, that'll let us preserve some of this wonderful fine detail. We won't have to wipe it out uh, and make it round. So how do we do that? Well, if I turn off the male, main leaf, you can see what's underneath it. It's this kind of weird shaped thing. And you know, I just basically bumped it out, um, you know, using the pen tool in my design program and made it big enough for this router bit to all fit in. So I can easily cut that female and then cut a male of exactly that thing and fit it in that slot. So I do that, glue that in, sand it flush, and then go back to the Shaper Origin and cut this yellow heart piece. And what it's gonna do is cut off if I click it on and off, it'll cut off part of that shadow and leave us with that nice, crisp, smooth transition. This does work. Like, this is what it looks like in real life. It works great. It's a super nice, delicate transition. So the technique works for that. Okay, so we got that one. Kind of a similar thing up here. I've got this, I showed you this shadow of the stem, got these little small areas that don't fit. Well, you know, what I've got is I cut the stem, my little router bit fits in there, no problem, it all fits in all of that, that's great. 
And after I've cut that, glued it in, sanded it flush, now I cut the stem and I've got that last piece. Okay, so let's turn off some of that stuff so it's not distracting us. And look out here. What I'd like to do over here is impossible. I can't figure out a way to do it. If I turn off that tip shadow, you can see this is rounded. It looks kind of ugly. I don't really like it. I want it to be sharp on that transition like that. I can achieve that. I would like this to be sharp too and this to be sharp, but I can't have that because in order to make this transition sharp over here, this little shadow has to be the last layer. And I don't have another layer that can cut that away and make that sharp like the other layers. So instead of having this nice sharp transition, I had to compromise. And that's what that shadow will look like now. It'll look like this kind of rounded thing. It still looks like a, I mean, I'll show you on the live one. It, it looks better live on the inlay than it looks on the screen. You know, it's fine, right? But it's not as sharp as I'd like it. That's just a compromise when you're doing an inlay. So that's how I do the design for the inlay. I mean, that's it in a nutshell. If it's a bigger inlay, I'm just doing this all over it, trying to deal to keep it sharp where I can by using multiple layers and where I can't, eh, it's gotta get rounded. There's no way around it. Okay, when we're doing a design like this, we're actually looking at the female parts. This is what the design's gonna look like when it's down on the board. And so these all represent female recesses that are gonna be cut. When you're doing a straight bit inlay, the males and the females are the same because they can just fit right in the same direction. But on one of these tapered bit inlays, we actually have to flip the males over to plug them in, to, to, to glue them in to get that wedge effect. And so for all of these males, well, let me go this way. First, we're gonna export all of these shapes as a female file. We'll have, you know, all, they'll all be um, inside cuts or pocket cuts or what have you as an inside, it, it, you know, for that file, for the females. And then for each of the males, I need to go and select it, copy it, paste it and then flip it horizontally. So up in Infinity Designer, I go layer, transform, flip horizontal. And now that's gonna be my male part. So I'm gonna rename that, you know, stem male. And I've gotta do a separate export for each male part separately. There's more to kind of what goes into getting it exactly ready to cut. I mean, that's the shape you want, but you also need to do a kind of a recess around it so it, it fits back down in, so you've got that saw gap around the male part. And I've got all the information on how to do that in that thread I posted on the Shaper Origin user forum. And, and I think that's better just to look at it there and, and see what settings I use for those exports. So really that's it though, that, that's the design process. And if you're interested in doing this, I would suggest maybe you, you make the one that I designed and you can see, if you can get that one to work, then design your own because you know, I, I think there's a lot of room for really good designs using this. I, I'm gonna say it, it's been a really fulfilling process to, to learn how to do these inlays because it is rare that I'm able to do something and look at it and go, I can't find any flaws. I mean, that's not normal for me in the workshop. I usually find, you know, lots of little issues that my, you know, clumsy 10 thumbs have created with my projects. But this one has just been a, just been a, frankly a joy to work with. So I've, I've really enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the video, you know, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Hope to see you back here. Bye.